In this tutorial, we will start to build a parphase modulation example towards making a DX7-like synth. In the last tutorial we saw basic phase modulation setup and we saw how this could easily be modular. In this tutorial we will make this truly modular, linking together six oscillators. I should say at the outset that this tutorial is potentially harder to follow than some of the tutorials that we have looked at so far. We will use patches as abstractions, and use the dollar notation for abstraction arguments. It is important to make things modular as the DX7 is comprised of six identical oscillator modules. Part of the power of the DX7 comes from the potential for reconfiguring the arrangement of oscillators. This is referred to as the algorithm. This is algorithm 1. This is algorithm 2. This is algorithm 3. This is algorithm 10. The DX7 has 32 different arrangements of oscillators. We will return to these routings in the next tutorial however. For the moment, we need to make our modules and make sure they sound right. First, let's make a single phase modulation patch and save it as an abstraction. We can use the phase or, plus, cosine, and multiply objects from last time as a starting point. We will be receiving messages in an inlet, audio in another inlet, and outputting audio from a single outlet. The input needs to differentiate between note events and three sets of parameters to control the oscillator, the ratio, which is for setting the frequency relative to the incoming note, the level, which is the output volume, and the envelope settings. We use the root object to split the input accordingly. Let's take a quick diversion to look at how we will use the root object, as we are combining multiple root objects together here. As we have seen before, the root object can be useful for splitting an input depending on particular words. Anything not recognized by root comes out of the right outlet. For us, this will be our MIDI notes. We will use eventually use a second root object for distinguishing between oscillators. This means our original message needs more information though. We need to specify which oscillator and which parameter before the actual value itself. This can be a very useful system for sending lots of different messages across a single channel though. Back to the module building. For the ratio, we multiply the frequency by our incoming ratio parameter. For the level, we add an additional multiply for the output, saving the existing multiply for the envelope. For the envelope itself, we will use the ADSR envelope that is already included in the pure data download. On a Macintosh. This will be inside the application.app file itself. You can right-click and select Show Package Contents, then look inside Contents, Resources, Doc, 3 Audio Examples, and you will find the ADSR.pd abstraction. It might be simpler to just download it from the really useful site linked below the video though. Either way, make sure you place the ADSR file in the same folder as the other files that you are working with, or in a folder that you link to in the path preferences in Pure Data. To that end. Let's also save this abstraction that we are working on into the same folder. I will call it PMOSC. 
Let's add the envelope now with the ADSR object. It takes five arguments that specify maximum volume, attack time in milliseconds, decay time, sustain level as a percentage, and release time. This kind of envelope requires both note on and note off messages. We covered these kinds of messages in the synthesized strings tutorial if you want a refresher. We can route the end parameters here, unpacking them. We don't need to control the level like this, so these four values are for attach, decay, sustain and release, and connect the last four inlets of the ADSR object. Our notes will come out of the right hand outlet of the root object because they don't match any of the search words, ratio, level or env. The MIDI note will need to be unpacked to get the pitch and the velocity. The pitch needs to be converted to a frequency to feed the phase or the velocity, which is in the range 0 to 127, needs to be used to do two things. First, set the level of the ADSR. This is between 0 and 1. So we divide by 128. We also need to trigger the envelope if the velocity is larger than zero, or close the envelope if it is zero, so we use a simple greater than object. This patch is getting clustered and confusing. We still need to add one more element though. We will want to distinguish between messages for all oscillators and messages for this oscillator alone. We do this with an additional root object that allows either messages that begin with the message, all OSCs or that begin with the specific number of this oscillator. We use the special $1 message for this to read a patch argument. Note that these need to be in separate root objects to work effectively. We initially got this wrong, so this is the corrected version. All this will hopefully make a little more sense once we start connecting things together. Finally, we need to add an audio inlet so that the oscillator can be modulated from outside. This connects to the plus object. Now we can save the patch and create a new patch to test this with. We will need to make sure our new patch is saved in the same folder as the ADSR and the PMOSC abstraction. Now we can create a new PMOSC instance and give it an oscillator number, one in this case. We can send messages into the right side. Remember that we are talking to the root objects on the inside, so we need to use the right wording and make sure the capital letters are the same and so on. We can send a note to all the oscillators by using the all oscs word, then putting a pitch and a velocity value to start a note. We need to send the same note with a velocity of zero to stop the note. That's working nicely. We will want to use send and receive to send messages, particular once we have more oscillators. Now let's add a MIDI note generator with a make note object. We can easily make more oscillators by copying and pasting, and changing the number.
All the oscillators receive messages if the all OSCs message is used. We can also use specific numbers to set specific values for particular oscillators though. E.g. This sets the ratios of oscillators 1 and 2. Note that at the moment the synth is not polyphonic. This will be addressed in the fourth tutorial in this series. We have tidied up the patch a little to create some space. We will now create a quick interface to test this setup. We will use sliders and number boxes for the ratio, level, and the four envelope ADS parameters. We specify the oscillator number using the special list prepend object. This adds the number 1 before our messages to send them to oscillator number 1 only. We also need a root list object to remove the extra list message that also gets added. Look at the help files for the list objects for more information. A useful range for the envelope parameters is around 5 milliseconds to around 5000. The sustain is an exception though, it should be between 0 and 100. They need to be sent together as a list so we use a pack object. We also use a trigger object to make sure each parameter also triggers the full set. Make sure you connect the pack first then the trigger so that the events happen in the correct order. Lovely. Now let's make one for each oscillator. We will do this in a new sub patch to save space. You might also want to make a neat abstraction for the interface. For each duplicate, update the list prepend object so that there is one for each oscillator. That sounds terrible. Let's try some different settings. Note that ratio parameters will sound most harmonic when they are clear ratios like 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 2, 3, 6, and so on. In the next tutorial we will look at flexible routings for the oscillators so that they can be reconfigured into the 31 other algorithms that the DX7 uses.